So Ubisoft's financial results turned up something very interesting and potentially promising for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, they did a breakdown of sales by platform. Uh, this goes over Q2 of the previous year, the past six months, and, well, Q2 of this current fiscal quarter. And here is what is amazing about that. So the leading platform for them in terms of sales was PlayStation 4 at 31%. The next platform was Xbox One at 20%. Guess which platform led you know, Q2 after that? Nintendo Switch at 19%. Percent. That's right. And if you look at the past six months, Nintendo Switch made up 12% of sales. Of course, that includes multiple quarters worth of sales. So you have to assume a majority of that 19% of sales that Nintendo Switch made up came from Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Now, of course, this is a success story that borrows Nintendo's own IP and combines it with something from Ubisoft. But this kind of sales success is how you get third parties to come to Switch. Now, we have talked in the past about how third parties are testing the waters with Nintendo Switch, whether it be Capcom or EA or Ubisoft or Bethesda, who seems to be testing it with quite a few titles. Uh, maybe it's so many titles now that Bethesda's not really testing anything. They're just all in. Uh, Ubisoft obviously dipped their toes in the water with Nintendo Switch as well. Now, they dipped their toes in the water in probably the smartest fashion you can, very similar to the way Koei Tecmo did by releasing, well, Fire Emblem Warriors, another IP that dips its toes into Nintendo's stable of franchises. And because they did this, and because they created a game that's so excellent, in fact, uh, I still think that Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Metal is the best Nintendo Switch exclusive now. The caveat to that, of course, is that I haven't finished Super Mario Odyssey, so I'm not including Super Mario Odyssey in the conversations yet. But, yeah, Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle is fantastic, and it sold very, very well. So well that 19% of their sales were made up of, you know, that game on Nintendo Switch. Just amazing. And, yeah, this is good news. Uh, if, if I had hoped that they were going to try to release you know, future Assassin's Creed games or future games in general on Switch uh, beyond just, you know, the Just Dance franchise, I feel like this 19% figure is justification for that. Because if you think about it, that's just 1% less than their total sales of all software on Xbox One. That is amazing. Amazing. In fact, it beats out PC. You could argue that they could justifiably release more of their games on Switch because of the sales numbers. Now, again, Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle is a very unique thing and is obviously probably going to sell a lot better than, say, if they had brought Assassin's Creed Origins over. But if they can have a success like Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, maybe they have a second one coming. Uh, maybe they have. Uh, you know, some other partnerships with Nintendo in the works for other partner games like that while also releasing the Assassin's Creed and these other games on Switch, you could start to see Nintendo Switch really climb up. And PlayStation 4, with their massive install base, was only 12% better. So Switch has the potential to gain on that uh, in years coming up. That is, if Ubisoft continues to show support. And with such a strong percentage of sales on a brand new platform, I don't know why Ubisoft won't. So this is kind of a case where someone dipped their toes in the water. They did it in a very smart way. And now they could use that to justify not only more games like that. Again, I think the... <laughs> I mean, the door is wide open for a Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle 2, and with how well the first one was received, the second one's probably going to sell pretty well as well. Now, I'm not saying they should, you know, crap one of those out next year, but if they announce one next year and it releases in 2019, I think that would be a smart decision on their part. But they could use this as a springboard to get Assassin's Creed and <laughs> all their other franchises out there, you know, bringing over For Honor or something. Like, they, they have a lot of franchises that they control. I wouldn't mind seeing The Division uh, get a second run at life on this platform, Watch Dogs 2, Watch Dogs 3 in the future, whatever the case may be. Uh, I'm pretty excited. And I know that <laughs> Ubisoft doesn't always make the best decisions out there. I mean, there's a reason Jim Sterling has the, oh, Ubisoft uh, <laughs> portion to some of his videos uh, because of the lies and the... Uh, terrible things that, you know, quote-unquote terrible things that Ubisoft has done over the years, but they are still one of the top Western AAA developers, and 
any sort of sales success like this, and this is a pretty significant chunk of sales success for a brand new platform, is noteworthy going up against platforms that have been on the market for a long time. So kudos to Nintendo, kudos to Ubisoft. Uh, we can only hope that, I mean, if this isn't a good enough sales success to see Ubisoft start bringing more games to the platform, then I don't know what is, because this has to be what other companies are dreaming of in terms of sales success. I'm sure Fire Emblem Warriors probably also did decently well for Koei Tecmo because Hyrule Warriors uh, ended up being one of their best-selling Warriors games in quite a long time. And well, I don't think Fire Emblem Warriors is going to sell quite as well as Hyrule Warriors because Zelda is just kind of universally praised as a bigger franchise. Uh, I do think that Fire Emblem Warriors is going to perform well and probably already has. So this is just really, really good news. Really good news. And an example of, if you're going to dip your toe into the Nintendo fan base, you should do it in a way that makes sense before you start just bombarding people uh, necessarily with games that might be bad ports or whatever the case may be. Now, this isn't to knock Bethesda, who's obviously trying to put their best foot forward and bring in over three games so far. Uh, and this isn't knocking, even Koei Tecmo, who says they have you know three or four more games planned for Switch, uh, but it's still interesting uh, to see this approach work so well. Thank you, Ubisoft, for making that game, because I don't think that game exists without you. Thank you, Nintendo, for allowing them to use your IP uh, and have it mixed so masterfully with the Rabbids, which I, I think when I first heard this concept, I'm like, really? Mario and the Rabbids? And the thing is, I like the Rabbids, but I didn't even think that would be a good mix, uh, and it worked out. So, awesome, good stuff. Uh, you know, we spend a lot of time chastising third parties on this channel uh, for some of the dumb decisions they make. But it's nice when you have a positive story like this built around a fantastic game, uh, a success story for third parties that could drive future third party support. Again, I know the counter argument to this will always be have Mario in the game. So, of course, and Mario sells to Nintendo fans. I understand that. Uh, but I think it also helped uh, reinvigorate things like the Rabbids and reinvigorate Ubisoft to consider releasing more games on the platform. Because if you're going to have a Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle 2 coming, that could help offset some of the risk you might take with an Assassin's Creed Origins port or something like that. Where if even if that doesn't sell very well, you can still get a high percentage of sales of another game. Uh, and when you can offset risks, that's what opens the door to keep releasing games. So yeah. Unlike EA, who just shot, you know, threw a FIFA 18 out there, uh, they didn't have like a guaranteed success story on Switch. Whereas now Ubisoft has, a, has you know, what what could be a budding franchise uh, that they could build on top of that will enable them to have, you know, take other risks with their other IPs. Uh, good stuff. Good. I'm just glad this happened. 19 percent, just an insane percent. I mean. 12% less than the PlayStation 4, who, that has 70 million units on the market. Just, man. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Gents from Nintendo Prime, and if you like this video, you know what to do, and if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content, and I will catch you in the next one.